you think about it, I talk about this, you know, that J.D. Rockefeller controlled, when he was the richest man in the world, he controlled one commodity, oil. Standard oil was it. He didn't control how we thought, how we voted, how we uh, process information, how we think. These gatekeepers, these handful of tech oligarchs are the most powerful, not just wealthy, but powerful people that have ever lived. Forget Alexander the Great. He never controlled people's minds. Right, they're, they're controlling how our minds are being shaped in ways that, um, as, as Johnny said, socially awkward nerds probably shouldn't be at the at the control panel of shaping uh, the, the, the global consciousness, which they are, and and it happened so rapidly. You know, it happened essentially in the blink of an eye that we went from you know the the steam engine to the search engine uh, in evolutionary terms was such a quick process that I think we all got lubricated by the ease and access and oh wow look how cool my devices are so as we got put in these digital cages and i call it a form of stockholm syndrome we fell in love with the people that have enslaved us because we've we've deified them we've made you know steve jobs was a rock star with his you know black turtleneck and as he did his thing and so the people that are keeping us playing candy crush while rome is burning are our new overlords and and we we idolize them we 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 put them up on pedestals like you said it's it's cool to it's aspirational to be a nerd now and they know the danger so much they're not using smartphones their children are not on social media they're not touching these devices with a 10 foot pole so that's the worst part it's not like they've adopted the technology themselves they know its powers i'll go even one step further it's it's not even their kids so sergey brin and larry page were Montessori students. Jeff Bezos was a Montessori student. They themselves, the most powerful minds in the tech world, were were pretty traditional non-tech childhoods. And what we've effectively done that I talk about from a mental health standpoint is we've softened up the psychological immune system of, of a young generation, the you know, instant gratification, the curation, the the influencers. We've softened the underbelly of, of resilience grip, because I work with these people on the front lines with these young kids. Boy, this generation is not what you would call the most resilient and gritty generation. This is not the greatest generation by, and, and I'm not being get off my lawnish about this. I'm just talking factually from working with young people. There's a fragility there that I'd not seen even 10 years ago, much less 20 years ago. And I think that's part of the playbook, right? Because you know, it goes back to the old Marxist, you know, if, if religion is the opiate of the people, if, if digital soma can be the opiate of the people, you know, a, a, a sedated, seduced uh, populace is not going to educate and organize and look up and say, hey, wait a second, I, I didn't agree to put, be, be, be monetized like this or for you to use my digital exhaust in whatever way you think or for you to control what I see and what my children see. I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. But wow, I'm playing Candy Crush and look how cool my iPhone 14 is. And, and so they've seduced us by, by the candy-coated electronics while they've been essentially enslaving us. I hate to you know, be polemic about it, but... Social media also works to feed and fuel our cognitive distortions. It understands how to manipulate our cognitive distortions in order to get us addicted. When you talk about the black and white thinking, that is a clear cut sign of a cognitive distortion being manipulated in order to gain more, uh, more of your attention into that economy. Mm -hmm. 